It's really important to always remember that you're probably not going to be the only person using your smart home. Even if you live alone, you'll likely have people visiting you or staying over at your house from time to time. If you don't live alone, then you need to make damn sure that everyone who lives in your house is able to easily do the things that they need to do, like turn on the lights, adjust the heating or cooling, or turn on the TV. Back in the day, my partner used to tolerate living in a smart home, but she never used any of the voice assistants because she couldn't remember the names that I'd given each of the specific lights, and she got frustrated when things didn't work as she expected. Over the years, I've learned a few things about designing a smart home that have changed her opinion about it all. She now loves living in our robot house, and in this video, I'm going to share with you the most important things that I've learned about making a family-friendly, inclusive smart home. Let's take a look. There's a lot of talk in the smart home subreddits, twitters, and forums about something called the wife approval factor, or WAF. I don't like that term because it's unfortunately a byproduct of the mostly male dominated niche that we find ourselves in. But there is definitely something to be said for making sure that the technology that we buy and the smart homes that we set up work well for the other people that live with us. The first tip I've learned is to include the people that you share your house with in your buying decisions and automation planning. If I'm ever buying a smart home gadget that is going to be on display or be regularly used by my partner, I will always get her opinion on what I'm buying to make sure she's happy with the look and feel of it. When I was testing out smart light switches, trying to choose the ones that I was going to use all over our house, she saw and pressed the buttons on each and every one of them to make sure she was happy with it. I also get her involved if I'm creating any automations that will affect her. She helped me decide at what time the automated blinds should open and close each day, the heating temperature and schedule, and how dim the light should be when we get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. By involving your family in these types of decisions, they get a sense of ownership and come to realize that the house can be set up in any way that makes sense. It doesn't have to just behave exactly the way that you, the home automation god, has decided it should work. The other people in your house then understand that they have the power to make it more comfortable and work better for them by getting involved. My mum came to stay with us last year and she told me one morning that the lights were too bright in the hallway when she got up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. I had no idea. I didn't sleep in the guest room so I'd never noticed it before. We immediately changed some of the automations together to a different level of brightness and she told me the next morning that it was much better. Similarly, the other week, my partner asked me to add a button to our smart home dashboard that turned off all the lights in the bedroom. Turns out, she was switching the lights off on the dashboard one by one before she went to sleep at night, and she thought there had to be a better way to turn off everything with a single tap. I quickly added a button to the dashboard, and it's made her life just that little bit easier. She even thanked me again for it a few days ago. Product Management 101. You should try and create an environment that welcomes feedback and feature requests. Try and keep an eye out for automations that you can create to help your family members out. Maybe your children don't like the dark, so you set up some automatic night lights that come on when they get out of bed. Or in my case, I noticed that my partner kept freaking out that she'd left her hair straightener switched on when we'd gone out. If I was still at home, I'd often get a text message asking me to go and check them. They were never left on, by the way, but the thought of it still made her feel uncomfortable. I ended up buying a smart plug with power monitoring and plugged her hair straighteners into that. She could now check at any time to see if they were switched on and using power, and if she did accidentally leave them on, she could turn them off right there from the Home Assistant app. Speaking of apps, for a smart home to be truly smart, you shouldn't need to use apps or voice assistant to control things around the house day to day. Your house should automatically adapt to your needs, doing the right things at the right time for all the people who live there. This is where clever automations come in, that add value not just to you and your family, but also to anyone who visits your home. Some good examples of this are motion-activated lights that turn on the right lights at the right level of brightness. Not only does this stop you from having to fumble around for a light switch in the dark, but it also helps out your visitors who might not know where the light switches are or which one turns on which lights. Smart blinds are great too. You can set up automations that open them each morning and close them at sunset. You can get real clever and automatically close certain blinds to a specific level when the sun gets to that annoying level in the afternoon where it shines through your window into your eyes when you're sitting at your desk. But sometimes things are going to go wrong. It's inevitable that one of your automations will fail or a device will stop communicating with the network, so you need to make sure that there are other ways that you can control everything. This is one of the main reasons that I use smart light switches in my house instead of smart light bulbs. 
These keep working like normal switches, turning the power on and off to the light bulbs, even if your smart home hub is broken or an automation has failed. They're also really intuitive to use. Everyone knows how to use a light switch, even your grandmother. My smart heating system uses what appears to be regular thermostats on the walls, so anyone can easily turn up and down the temperature directly from the wall, and my automated blinds have a remote control that is paired directly to the blind, so they all work as normal, regardless of whether or not the smart home hub is working. And finally, if you have some smart lights or other devices you use every day but can only be controlled by an app or a voice assistant, then you're very much doing it wrong. While it may feel totally normal to you to tell a robot speaker to turn on the lights to 50% brightness, it will probably trip up your family members when they forget that the light is called hallway wall light or kitchen lamp 3. Invest in some wireless smart switches like the Philips Hue dimmer or IKEA or Tuya Sween switches that can be programmed to do certain things in your home automation system. You can even put stickers on the buttons to visually remind everyone what those buttons actually do. Like most things, you'll get better results from your smart home for everyone who lives there if you take the time to plan out your devices and automations before you set them up. Think about who might use a device or automation and how it will affect them. Involve them in planning it so they can make sure that you hear their perspective and design it for everyone. Then test out the automation somewhere first that isn't too important. I try and set up new devices or automations here in my office first. That way I can iron out all the kinks and improve them over a few days before I set up the same automation somewhere important, like a bedroom. The last thing you want is an untested automation going rogue and playing music at full volume at 3 o'clock in the morning. By following these guidelines, I've helped my partner become a big fan of home automation, and her input has helped me create a better overall smart home experience for the both of us and for anyone who comes to visit us. If you want to learn more about how I'm setting up my smart home so that it's family friendly and does all the right things at the right time, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that together we can make your home smarter.